Okay. There was a sense of our tradition was going to be lost. Something that we still fear. Uh, not, not a day goes by that I don't have a conversation within, within and without synagogue. Uh, what are we doing for the next generation? Things are going to be lost. The shul is going to be lost. Traditions are going to be lost. So we've been losing traditions for about 3,000 years. So at least it's one thing we don't do well um, is lose things. Um, I think also Pekeva gave us a real insight into how our sages lived their lives and how they prescribed us to live our lives in that every waking moment, everything that you do, uh, whether you're at your job or you're out or whatever, it, there's always an underlying, this is for Torah, this is for study, this is for mitzvot, this is for gemilut chasadim. Good morning, Alan. Good morning, Adam. How nice to you? see you. Good. Fine, thank you. You haven't missed anything. Good. Um, and just to say that we were saying um, the history of codified Jewish text really is, is um, things were codified as a result of a fear of things being lost. So specifically after the Second Temple, um, and as we go through the text, certain prayers come from different places. Um, and we're just going to jump in. So I will share what I have here. Does anyone have their own uh, Sidur with them? Yeah, I do. I've got three different ones. Three. I've got, yeah, I've got Art Scroll. Yeah. Simshalom, and uh, this is, uh, what is this? this is Birnbaum. Okay. I have so, Sidu Shila. Shila. Um, Ancient. So I, I have the Simshalom uh, from the RA because they sent it out um, and you'll see the, uh, the footnote here that we are allowed to use it during the pandemic. Uh, they sent out a digital copy uh, to all their shoals. I don't like the English in this Sidur. Um, the translator really tried to, I mean, okay, it's a, you know, it's, it, was, it was their style to, to really try to sort of match the Hebrew in terms of poetry, in terms of spirituality. To me, I want the literal translation of words. Um, and you can leave it up to me to find my own spirituality and meaning. Um, so I also have the art scroll with me because I, I like the, the, the English translation. So Berchot HaShachar, prayers of the morning. Alot HaShachar really literally means when the sun comes up. So many people have the custom, even before they rise in the morning, when you open your eyes, before you do anything else, we say, Modeani, women, we say, Moda ani lepanecha, melechai vekayam, I am grateful before you, living and established king, that you have returned my soul with compassion, and Raba, great or plentiful, is your emuna, your belief, your faith. So right away we see that our sages want us to be grateful. The, the, the first emotion that they want us to feel in the morning is that of gratitude. Something that, I, you know, psychology caught up with. Um, but what a beautiful way to wake up in the morning. Thank you, God, for restoring my soul. Notice the absence of Hashem's name, though. Melech Chai V'Kayam. So Sim Shalom is actually missing an additional paragraph. 
which is Reshit Chochmai Yirat Hashem, the, the beginning of Chochma, of wisdom, can be found in Yirat Hashem, in the fear of God. It's a very interesting statement. Sechel Tov Lechol Osehem, a good Sechel, a good, a good mind. Lechol Osehem, to all who do. Tehilato Omedet Laad, his Tehila, his praise, Omedet Laad, stands forever. Baruch Shem Kuvon Machuto Leolam Vaed, blessed is the name. Kevon Machutcha, the glory of his kingdom, Leolam Vaed, forever and ever. So I don't know why Sim Shalom uh, omitted that paragraph. It's not, you know, usually Sim Shalom omits um, things that have to deal with korbanot, with sacrifices, um, things that have, are perhaps uh, insensitive. Um, but perhaps you'll also find it interesting in what our Orthodox tradition has passed down and what the conservative tradition um, has has adapted. It's it's not in Birnbaum either. It's not? No. Interesting, very interesting. It's so practically cool. speaking, practically speaking, Modeani we say while we're still in our bed, uh, there's actually a dispute in the Gemara. Do you say it lying down or sitting up? But everyone agrees before the feet hit the floor. We say Modeani, and the reason Hashem's name is not in this first line is because um, we're, we're, we're perhaps still uh, not as pure as we would like to be after a night of sleep. Um, and we then get out of our beds, ritually wash our hands, and then continue. So that's that's the reason that the Gemara says that Hashem's name is left out of the first line. Um, then the daily practice is we wash our hands. Um, and we all know the bracha for that. Then what's also, okay, it's here. So Matovu. Then we're all assuming everyone gets in their car and goes to shul, <laughs> right? Actually, we had a very nice minion this morning, but Matovu Olecha Yaakov is a very famous pasuk, and it has become customary. This is what we say upon entering a synagogue. Um, what I do in my own practice is before, right after Nitzvah Yadayim, I put on tzitzit, uh, Talit Katan, and there's a bracha for that, Al Mitzvah Tzitzit, for, for the mitzvah of Tzitzit. And then I get dressed, then I go to Shul. Um, I'll be honest with you, I usually don't say Matovu walking into the Shul, although maybe this class will inspire me to do so. But Matovu Alecha Yaakov, Mishkinotecha Yisrael, um, a very famous line that comes from Torah. I know the story of Balaam and Balak. Bilam, <laughs> yeah, there we go so from the Torah. So the famous prophet Bilam, who was hired by Balak to curse the Jews, what happens? And there's the famous story with the donkey and the angel, and then finally Bilam comes to the to the to the cliff where he sees the Israelites camping in the desert and he's ready to, to let his curse rip. And what, what comes out of his mouth? How beautiful are your tents, Yaakov? Mishkenotecha Yisrael, your um, dwelling places, Israel. Um, you know, prophets prophesize. So even though he wanted to curse, he couldn't. Um, there is a famous uh, Gemara that why the double word, why Ohel and Mishkan, right? So, so those that study Torah, we know every word has a purpose. Why would the Torah 
uh, put two synonyms together. I mean, they they both mean dwelling places. So the general uh, consensus is Ohel is for synagogues and Mishkenotecha are for schools. Um, and then there's really a collection of Sukim uh, that come from Tehillim and, and perhaps various places. Uh, would someone else like to read? Vanibra of Chastecha. Okay, then I will continue. Feel free to jump in whenever you want. Vani berov chastecha avobetecha eshtachave el hechal kochecha beiratecha. As for me, and I'm reading now the English out of the art scroll. As for me, through your abundant kindness, I will enter your house. Eshtachave el hechal kochecha beiratecha. I will prostrate myself toward your holy sanctuary in awe of you. Adonai ahavti me'on betecha u'mekom mishkan kevodecha. O Hashem, I love the house where you dwell and the place where your glory resides. Vani eshtachave ve'ech ra'a. I will prostrate myself and bow. Evrecha lifne Adonai Osi, and I shall kneel before Hashem, my Maker. Vaanit filati lecha Adonai et ratzon. And as for me, may my prayer to you, Hashem, be at an opportune time. Elohim, Elohim, berov chastecha. O God, in your abundant kindness, aneni. Answer me with the truth of your salvation. Really a beautiful paragraph. We can take a look at, oh, here we go. In the transliteration and the English. This is actually as literal as the Sim Shalom gets, I find. I was going to say, is it really that different? No, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty, pretty close. And then we get to putting on our talit. So, or, I mean, first of all, we can, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, we're, we're only sort of starting this class and, and I find as we learn and as we go, we'll, we'll sort of get a feel as to how deep and, and what and how to sort of analyze every tefillah. But perhaps let's just take a pause for a second and discuss the need to go to synagogue, um, you know, or why is there a need to go to synagogue? Why can't we daven at home i mean we obviously we could daven at home but why should i go to synagogue when i can just daven at home what well, to make a minion first of all to, so but why but why to make a minion because it's necessary for certain prayers and it's all about community it's all about community so i would say that they probably after um the decree of making a minion they probably only then allotted certain tefillot to say with a minion, as opposed to the other way around, right? Um, I think there's also something about making an ohel for Hashem. You, 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 there's a difference between my own private dwelling and another physical structure that I build and that I support to say this is Hashem's dwelling place. And I mean, we, we all know that Hashem is everywhere, right? Hashem is here, Hashem is there, Hashem is truly everywhere. So it's not to say that 
Hashem is more in synagogue, but perhaps it's for us to, to, to strengthen our own belief to say we support this physical place as a place of prayer. So we come into Shoal, we say Matovu, and now we're going to put on a talus. So these are some beautiful meditations before putting on a talit. And again, I'm going to, I'm going to confess, I do not say Barfi Nafshi. Um, perhaps I should. Usually I'm about 10 minutes late for davening, so I'm frantically putting on my talit and tefillin. Um, wow, this... English transcription sometimes gets pretty funny. Um, but let's take a look at it. This, this, this is what's been codified in our Sidur. So they want it here for a reason. Barchin Avshiat Hashem. Blessed Hashem. Hashem Elohai Gadalta Me'od. Hashem Elohai, my, my God. Gadalta Me'od. You are... You are great. Hod vehadar lavashta. Hod vehadar synonyms of beauty. Lavashta. You are clothed in. Ote or kasalma. Yes, Marilyn. I know I should know, but I don't. When we use Hashem and when we use the the real name. Um, is it only when we're in shul? Is it only when we're pl praying? So I, I, I mean, I think I just said Hashem now just because that's what came out of my mouth. But I, I, right, I, but I, I no, I know there is a. I subscribe a to to um, any any learning we can say Adonai as many times as we want. I mean, this is my own, you know, personal custom, especially when we're learning from the Sidur. Um. You know, if I if I wrote an article for the bulletin, then I say Hashem. If I if I was in casual if I was in casual conversation, walking on the street with someone, somehow talking about God, I would say Hashem. But if we're but if we're engaged in you know learning, um, then I don't have any issue saying saying you know God's name. Barchin um, Avshi et Adonai. See how art school translates this one. Bless, uh, bless Hashem, O oh my soul. Adonai Elohai Gadalta Meod. Hashem, my God, you are very great. Hod Vehadar Lavashta. You have donned majesty and splendor. Ote Or Kasalma. Cloaked in light as with a garment. Note. Shamaim Kariya, stretching out the heavens like a curtain. So I'm not sure if anyone here took part in Rabbi Lewitis's Shabbat afternoon uh, program when she was here a couple of weeks ago, but she quoted this this pasuk, Ote Or Kasalma, uh, which comes from Tehillim. Um, and she was not talking about a talit; she was talking about something else, but. So, lavashta, we, we are about to cloak ourselves in a talit. So, this is, these are the, the thoughts that we have. Hashem, you're great. You, you dawn in splendor and, you know, beauty as I'm about, as I'm about to dawn myself in, you know, uh, splendor and beauty. The Shulchan Aruch says, the, the code of Jewish law says, why do we put on a talit? We wrap ourselves in a beautiful garment in this world because we want Hashem to wrap us in a beautiful garment in the next world. Don't we get buried with the talit? Ah, Gail, good morning. Good morning. How but we you? get buried with the talit. And Naomi, good morning. Ah, sorry, I have my... Uh... Gail, all the way from... All the way Miami from Miami Beach. Miami, Miami Beach. Beach. Beautiful. I just got here <laughs> two days ago. Uh, Sunday, yeah. 
I had my windows minimized because I was reading, so I didn't I didn't notice other people came on. Naomi, can, can you hear us okay? Okay, I'm assuming yes. Um, yes, Gail, you're right. We do bury ourselves in the talit. We we render the talit on kosher first. Um, so we we would cut a tzitzit off, or we would cut a corner because um, we don't bury a kosher talit, but that's exactly right. Uh, You're right, we, actually, when the neshama goes up, it doesn't go with the talit that is buried in the ground. Correct. So God wraps us over there. Yeah. I had an issue with your translation of eshtachave. Okay. Eshtachave is not crossed. I didn't even know what is prostrate. But well, it's, prostrate it's bow. Is, it's bow. No, prostrate is to lie down on the floor. Right. Mm -hmm. So you shouldn't say prostrate to shtachave is only bow down. Right, but I, I, would, I would argue that. Yeah. I would argue that uh, back in the day, I would think that every time they would shtachave, they would go down to the floor. No, because in the next sentence now, it says, anishtachave ve'echre'a. Echre'a means get down on your knees. Right. So bow down is like this, and is right? actually to get on the knees, not to lie down on the floor. Mm -hmm. Isn't tachanun instead of prostrating yourself when you do tachanun and you lie on your arm? There's somewhere that. Yeah, tachanun really from the shorash uh, of chen. Uh, Grace, tachanun, are, are, are what we call prayers of supplication. Uh, in Hebrew, we also call them nefilat um, apayim, because the first line of tachanun is sarli meod kini pla na Hashem, because I fall down. Uh, so we actually symbolize that by our heads going down. Um, okay, so you would translate it just as, as bow, yeah. Okay, great. And so this next paragraph is putting us in the proper headspace before saying the bracha of tzitzit. We, we should always be in the headspace of the mitzvah we are about to do. Hinini uh, mitatef, or the feminine mitatefet. But tzitzit k'day lekayim mitzvat bori. So this, I don't think, is is in the art scroll. Or oh, there's something. Uh, there's another meditative paragraph in the art scroll. I am about to wrap myself in tzitzit k'day lekayim in order to fulfill mitzvat bori. The mitzvah from my creator, Kakatu Torah, as it says in the Torah, the Astulahem Tzitzit, they shall make Tzitzit al Kanfe Bigdehem le on the on the kanaf, on the corners of their clothes, le Dorotam for generations. Oh, here it is. And as I um, cloak myself in a talit in this world, so my soul should merit to wear a beautiful talit in the next world. Amen. So that, that's right out of the Shulchan Aruch. And then we say the bracha for the tzitzit. Baruch Hashem Blessed are you, King of the world, that sanctified us with your mitzvah and commanded us to lehit atef patzitzit, to wrap ourselves in tzitzit. Of course, we all know it comes from Shema. Um, and then varying people have different customs as to sort of how they wrap themselves, but uh, actually, in the Shulchan Aruch, which I which I will keep on quoting, because that's that's the sort of codified Jewish law. Um, the Shulchan Aruch says, which is a very interesting 
a footnote to this, we should wrap ourselves like the Arabs do. So when it comes to wrapping a garment around our heads, like it, it says literally, uh, just like the Arabs do. Uh, I'm sure they have different customs on how to wrap head, head scarves too. Um, Adam, I just yes. realized there's, there's no bracha for putting on a kippah, is there? No, there's no bracha for putting on a kippah. Kippah is not a religious artifact. When, it's, when you don't need it anymore, you throw it in the garbage. Um, but uh, that is correct. So why is it necessary then to wear a kippah? It's become, uh, you know, I, tradition. I get the feeling back in the day it was not the kippahs that we know today. They had hats, they had other types of head coverings, um, and I'm sure the kippah evolved over centuries. Um, yeah, a kippah. Does it actually say to cover the head when you go into a mishkan? It doesn't say into a mishkan. It says, um, and it's really or all the time. It says in the Shulchan Aruch as well that mm -hmm. a righteous man, and it's written in the in the mail, does not walk dalad amot without covering their head. So. A righteous person does not walk four amot, uh, which is a unit of measurement from the Mishnah, which we're not exactly sure, but let's say four, four paces without covering their head. So, even so, so we need no, to cover the head all the time. You need to cover no, the head all the time. Yeah. What about when you go to the washroom? Still, I mean, there, you know, there's no... Um, there's because I know no there's men, men remove their talit when they go walk into the bathroom. Because they're kedusha, it's something, it's something that you say a you know bracha over. Uh, the kippah is not. not. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know talit katan though. So for tzitzit, you're not required to take them off, but you should maybe you should wrap. So you know some people have the custom to, to have their tzitzit out and sort of like you know flopping in the wind uh and you should really have the custom to to gather them together and tuck them like into your shirt so there's no risk of them uh you For, know being uh, the soil yeah, right exactly then there's this very beautiful excerpt from Tehillim um maya kachastecha elohim Adam How dear is your kindness, Hashem? Adam um, Adam, the sons of men. Betzel knafecha yechesayun is what? Um, the sons of man take refuge in the shadow of your wings. Yirviyun mideshen beitecha benachal adanecha kashkem. May they be sated from the abundance of your house. And now I'm reading from the art scroll. And may you give them to drink from the stream of your delights. Ki imcha mekor chayim beorcha nire o. For with you is the source of life, mekor chayim, beorcha nire o. By your light we shall see light, right? Again, the, the passages that we read before the Talit, dote o kasalma, that we're, we're cloaking ourselves in light. With your light, we will see light. Extend your kindness to those who know you and your charity to the upright of heart. 
again from Tehillim, chapter 36. So just like we did for the Talit, another um, meditative moment for Tfilim. So, I'm a but here. I I now enter into the headspace to put on tefillin, and these are all sentences, or not all, but that come from what's inside of our tefillin. So there's four excerpts uh, that are in our uh, tefillin, four parshiot, four pieces of cloth, pieces of parchment with different excerpts from the Torah. And we then say the bracha, I'm going to skip this paragraph for now. We then say the bracha lehaniach tefillin to, to don tefillin. And because there's two of them, there's, this goes on with your, with your arm. And the one for the head is al mitzvat tefillin. And then as we finish with the, with the nodding, we say, Baruch Shem Kivod Malchuto Le'olam Ba'ed. Blessed is the name, Kivod Malchutcha, the glory of your uh, kingdom forever. Now, I find this a very beautiful passage. This is customary to recite when you knot your hand. So the, your, arm, your arm goes on first, bracha number one. Your head goes on second, bracha number two. And then we have the custom, and everyone has a slightly different custom, or there's several if you're Ashkenazi or Sparty or, or uh, Hasidish, or this is how I was taught, this is how you were taught. But pretty much everyone has the custom to recite these sentences, which are ve'erastich li le'olam, I betrothed to you forever. I betrothed you to me forever. I betrothed you to me with righteousness and justice. With kindness and compassion. I betrothed you to me with faithfulness, the yadat et Adonai, and you shall know Adonai, your God. I actually wrote a song for Yahel at our chuppah uh, using these, these words. Um, okay. How are we doing on time? Five past nine. And so is this a 30 minute or sh should we do 45 minutes? As yes. Long as we don't That's do okay. an hour and five minutes. <laughs> okay. So I just really wanted to get to this bracha. Okay. Because this is a bracha that a lot of people don't know exists. And when I do it with my kids, they laugh and giggle because they think it's silly. Um, this is the bracha it's customary to recite after going to the washroom. Um, and Asher Yatsar et Adam Bechokhmah. So, so the bracha is known as Asher Yatsar. Um, and I mean, if you've ever had issues with things coming out and going in, um, it's, it is a very nice bracha to say. So, Baruch Atah Hashem Alekinu Melech HaOlam, as 95% of all blessings start. Asher Yatsar et Adam Bechokhmah, that created mankind Bechokhmah, in wisdom. Uvara vo nekavim, nekavim, chalulim, chalulim, and created many openings and uh, and holes 
גלוי וידוע לפני כיסא כבודך, that um, it galur v'yadua, it is known, it is, it, is, uh, it is obvious and known lifnei chisei chevodecha, in front of your throne of glory, she'im yipateach echad mehem, that if one should open, o yisatem echad mehem, or one should close, i'efshar l'yitkayem v'la'amod l'fanecha, it would be impossible to lihitkayem to to get up, to be established, and to stand before you, velamod lefanecha. Baruch Ata Adonai, blessed are you, God. Rofe chol basar, healer of all flesh, umafli laasot, and wonderment of all creation. So interesting footnote to this bracha. There was a dispute between, and I don't remember who it was, I, I, I believe it was Bar Papa and Rava, two, two fixtures from the Mishnah, but don't quote me. Um, I, will, I will look up the Mishnah and, and find out, but there was a dispute. Should the bracha be Baruch Atah Hashem Rofechol Basar, period, or should the bracha be Baruch Atah Hashem Mafli La'asot, and like many Jewish answers, let's not choose one. Both are right. <laughs> so the bracha became rofecho basar umafli laasot. It's 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 rare, I think, to have a bracha with this vav and this and that, right? Our blessings are so specific. Hamotzi lechem mina aretz, borei pri haetz. It's it's like for the it it's for the for the specific mitzvah that we're about to do, that's what we bless. Um and so this one I find kind of kind of funny um that it has this vav and this and that. Um okay, let's do one more paragraph. Thank God for our body, and now we thank God for our soul. Hello, hi. My God. First of all, just to, just to frame um, the source of all, I mean, a lot of these sentences have come from the Torah, have come from, and, and Tehillim, uh, Psalms. I'd say the bulk of our tefillah comes from Psalms, you know, usually um, attributed to King David, but that's up for debate. And Mode Ani, you know, I, I, I looked for the source. It seems to be a newer prayer. You know, it's probably only, uh, uh, you know, a thousand years old or so. No, less than that. Uh, but I found one credit to a rabbi known as Moshe ben Machir. I think it was from Wikipedia actually quoted that, so I don't know the, the source, but I looked up Moshe ben Machir and he was a Kabbalist from Tzvat. So that period of time certainly authored many prayers and also uh, added to the codified liturgy. Uh, but sadly, I, I find we don't often know who exactly put it in, um, but Rabban Gamliel is someone that we know uh, really codified a lot of the Jewish text. Let's do one more. Hello, hi, my God. The soul that you gave me, right? And, and I thought of Modeani because we, we begin our day thanking God for our soul. And now we are about to do that again. You created you 
created it. Atayatzarta, it's another word for creation. Atat nefachtabi, you breathed it into me. And you guard it in Bikirbi, in my body. And you in the future will take it from me. And you will return it to me in the future to come. Does that mean Gilgul Neshamot? That's what I think it means. I think it means Tchiyat HaMetim. Tchiyat HaMetim, yeah. You know? Um, Zombie land. <laughs> you know, this, this is a whole land other... Zombie land and Gilgul reincarnation is not the same thing. It could be Tchiyat HaMetim if a baby is born and you put the Neshama of somebody in the baby, then you give him back life. Right. So you be, give life back to the neshama that is lifeless. But I don't believe in tchiyat hametim. Well, Zo zombies. believe it or not, we say I, I, the bracha for it three times a day. Mechaye uh, hametim. You know, uh, we, we don't pretend to understand um, nor is it, I find, a central, um, a central thought that we really rally behind. Uh, I, was, I was never taught to do mitzvot for tchiyat metim for the sake of my soul becoming, uh, you know, alive again. Uh, and I'm sure there's, I mean, there is, there's schools of thought, there's, there's volumes upon volumes of mystical works dedicated to this um and i i'm of the opinion that really i don't understand it i will never understand it um but even if you want to take a scientific approach you know and you know, please correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm the furthest thing from a scientist. But what I understand in terms of energy, right? So if a soul, you can say the soul is our energy within, energy doesn't die. It just gets transferred. So we don't know. You know, but what I do believe is that souls come and go. Where they come from or where they go, I have no idea. Um, I've been beyond, I've been blessed to, to see four children come into this world. Um, you know, and I, I, I have no doubt that souls come into this world. You know, and every moment that my soul is within me, I am grateful to you, Hashem Elokai. My God, and the God of my uh, forefathers, Ribon Kolamasim, the 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 Rav of all of creation, Adon Kol Hanishamot, the Master of all souls. Baruch Adonai Hamachan. Here's a blessing for you, Gail. Hamachazir Nishamot Livkarim Meitim, who restores. Souls to dead bodies. So I think we're also talking about here that the Mishnah says, and, and, I'm, and I'm not exactly sure of, of the fraction, I think it's 150th, that Shena is 150th of Mavet. That when you're asleep, it's the closest thing we come to death um, without dying. I don't know if anyone knows any you know, scientific uh, facts about that, but I think we all understand that our bodies shut down considerably when we sleep. And thank you for returning my soul to me in in the morning. I would I th I would argue that um, modern science contradicts this because our body keeps working all night, our brain keeps working all night, like a computer sort of sorting things. 
Um, I don't think it's safe to to uh, reference science for this particular translation. Uh, although I can imagine that back in the day, people did think that they were partially dying <laughs> and then coming back to life in the morning. And I would like to think that when you say team is that we are awakening. Our soul is awakening during the day. Um, I can't get used to the concept of a zombie. <laughs> and, and frankly, I don't think zombie is a very Jewish concept. Um, no. when, when I mean, you know, partially dying, it's, you know, we, we don't breathe the same. Our, our heart doesn't pump the same. Our lungs don't, don't work the same way. Um, certainly our brain never stops, but I think our physical bodies change. I don't, I don't quite know the exact change, but I would think that our organs function differently um when we're asleep yes they do yeah they're they're catching up they're regenerating they're not doing the same work they did during the day right they're, yeah. they're also saying i heard from a uh, paper man that nails and a beard when they shave a man after death it continues growing yeah nails and nails and hair don't stop even after death wow Then we come to study Torah, and then we're going to get into some of the actual Berchot HaShachar. We've, we've only done three. <laughs> mm. All right, everyone. For those that want to learn how to, how to lead davening, <laughs>